After carrying out your safety checks, bring the patient into the scanner room. Help them to lie supine on the bed with their head in the head coil. Provide the patient with an emergency buzzer and make sure they know how to use it. Provide headphones to protect the patient's ears. And put the head coil in place. Centre to the glabella. And move the patient carefully into the scanner. Make sure they're calm and comfortable before you leave the room. Once you're back in the control room, select the correct patient details in the browser, or you can type them in manually if necessary. It's very important to get the details right, including the correct patient weight, so that the SAR can be calculated accurately. Register the patient as lying head first and supine. Select the correct protocol according to your hospital and radiologist guidelines. Begin with an initial scout or localizer sequence in three planes. Plan your axial sequence in all three planes. On the sagittal localizer, axial slices should pass parallel to a line joining the inferior border of the genu and the splenium of the corpus callosum. The slices should cover the brain from vertex to below the foramen magnum. On the coronal localizer, the central slice should pass along a line from the superior sagittal sinus through the third ventricle and down the center of the brain stem. Center the axial localizer in the field of view and apply. Now plan the next axial sequence. You can copy the planning and centering from your first T2 axial. Make sure the coverage and centering are correct and apply. Repeat this process for the T1 and any subsequent axial sequences. Now plan your coronal sequence using all three localizer planes. On a sagittal localizer, the coronal slices should run perpendicular to the line from the genu to the splenium of the corpus callosum. Ensure that the slices cover the entire brain from frontal sinus to the posterior occipital lobe. Center the image in the coronal field of view. Plan the sequence on the axial view. The slices should run perpendicular to the midline of the brain, with the center point lying over the midline. Plan the sagittal sequence. Adjust the image in the sagittal field of view. On the coronal localizer, the central slice should run parallel to the midline of the brain. Make sure you cover the full width of the brain from side to side. Center to the midline on the axial view and again cover from side to side. The diffusion axial slices are planned parallel to a line from the glabella to the foramen magnum.
This reduces artefact at the border between the paranasal sinuses, which contain air, and the denser bones of the skull base. Be sure to cover the whole brain from vertex to foramen magnum. Centre to the midline in coronal and axial views. If the radiologist has requested a gadolinium injection, it's essential to check the patient's kidney function, in line with national and hospital guidelines. Only proceed if it's safe to do so. When planning the post-contrast sequences, axial planning can be copied from the pre-contrast T1 sequence. And the coronal post-contrast sequence can be copied from the pre-contrast T1 coronal. Once the pre-contrast sequences are complete, make sure the correct contrast name and volume are entered into the scan details, following radiologist or hospital protocols. Remind the patient to lie still as they may need to be moved out of the scanner to administer the contrast. Inject the contrast following the hospital and manufacturer's guidelines. Check that the contrast has not tissued or extravasated and that the patient is feeling well before you leave the room. Now continue with the post-contrast sequences. You should review your images as the scan proceeds. In T2 images, fluids and fat will appear bright. Most pathologies will also appear bright on T2. Flare is a fluid attenuated inversion recovery sequence. Fat will appear bright but fluid will appear dark, and most pathologies will appear bright. Flare sequences are useful for showing pathologies close to the ventricles and sulci, where the CSF shows bright on normal T2 sequences. On the T1 sequence, fluids appear dark, fat is bright, and most pathologies will appear dark. This is a coronal T1 sequence. And this sagittal is a T2 sequence. This B0 diffusion scan sequence looks quite similar to a T2 because the diffusion value is zero. This is a B500 diffusion sequence. And this is a B1000 sequence with a high diffusion factor. Here, areas of restricted diffusion, such as stroke, will appear bright. This is an ADC or apparent diffusion coefficient map, where areas of restricted diffusion now appear dark. This is a T1 post-contrast axial sequence. In this case, you can see multiple enhancing lesions. In comparison to the T1 non-contrast axial scan. On the T1 coronal sequence, the lesions are again visualised as bright areas.